All right, all of the notes handed in. And you've got some notes to get back as well. The TAs will give them to you when they're ready. Uh, our plan for today is we're going to go through the decibels tutorial. We're going to mark the exercises for chapter eight. And if we have time, which I really doubt, we're going to go on to chapter nine. So we we're going to start with the decibels tutorial. And do you have your calculators ready? You won't need them much, but there is a little part that uses a calculator. This is going to be more than you probably need to know about decibels, but it's going to be more familiar to you the next time you run into something having to do with decibels. And like I said, we're mostly not going to be tested on this in the final unless I mention specifically something will be included. So you can sort of see from the cover pictures what's going on here. Here we've got sound as we hear it at one meter, at two meters, at four meters. That just gives you an idea of what's coming. Conversation at pretty close range is about 65 decibels. A car passing at 50 feet, 75 decibels. And a big truck passing at 50 feet, about 85 decibels. This may not mean that much now, except you can see the numbers going up, but you'll understand them better. Uh, as we go along. Air pressure and sound. When we talk about sound, we're talking about changes in air pressure. Air pressure at sea level is about 101,325 pascals, which is written capital PA. And this is about one atmosphere. These are just down way that we use in physics to measure things like air pressure or about 14.7 pounds per square inch, and that's PSI, or one kilogram per square meter. That's much easier to remember, isn't it? So if we have one square centimeter of space about this big in like a pillar that just goes straight up, the weight on us, the weight of the air pushing down on us is about one kilogram per square centimeter. That's pretty easy to understand, right? So the other ones are just huan xuan, huan xuan cheng, the other down way. Uh, this will register as 76 centimeters or 760 millimeters or 29.92 inches of mercury on a mercury barometer. What's a barometer? What's a barometer? That's right, 就是两气压的. And if the air pressure is higher, it's going to push down more and that's going to push the mercury in a barometer up further. So that's what we are measuring here is about, uh, is air pressure, the air pressure that's on top of us all the time at sea level. Micropascal and Pascal. The variations in air pressure that our ears hear as sound are very, very small. That's one thing you know, need to know from the beginning is that these variations in air pressure that we hear as sound, the variations are really, really tiny. They're between 20 micropascals, which we write in this way, or 0 0.00002, 0, 0, 0, 0, 4 zeros, 2. And that is two one hundredths of a pascal, or newtons per square meter, or 0 0.0002, which is two ten thousandths microbar, or dyne per square centimeter, and 20 pascals. Now that probably meant nothing to you, but it's going to mean something to you a little more as we go along. Because this 20 micropascals, or two one hundredths of a pascal, these units represent the very, very smallest sound that we can hear, the very smallest differences in air pressure that will register a sound in our ears. So 20 micropascals, that's pretty easy to remember. And they go all the way up to 20 pascals. We've changed our unit from micropascal to pascal. So the very, very softest sound we can just barely hear, 20 micropascals. The very, very loudest sound that we can tolerate is about 20 pascals. Okay? And this just show you, this, uh, shows you this uh, 
tool bell here, this tool here that they have, the differences in air pressure as a sound wave, as a sine wave. Now, we're going to talk about power and watts. Power or sound energy, W equals work, radiated by a source per unit of time is measured in watts. We're going to find a way to measure the energy of sound. We can use power to measure sound. And what is power? Power is work. That's just how much energy is radiated divided by time. So power includes work or energy plus time together. So far so good? You don't have to memorize anything, just be familiar. When we're talking about power, we're talking about energy and time, these two things. So it's energy divided by time. Watt and picowatt, the faintest sound we can hear, which is 2.00002, and that comes out to tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, that's two hundred thousandths, thousandths of a pascal, it translates into 10 to the negative twelfth power, watts, not watt, right? That's what we use to measure the energy of sound. So, this is a very, very tiny, tiny bit of energy. It's 10 to the negative 12th power. You can see all those zeros. That's one teeny tiny part of a watt. This is called a picowatt. The loudest sound our ears can tolerate, like we've just mentioned, is 20 pascals, and that's about one watt. So this just gives you an idea of the scale. This teeny tiny part of a watt, up to one watt. One watt is already a sound. We can't stand it because it's too loud. It's going to hurt our ears. And here's the power comparison between London to New York, from London to New York. The physicist Alexander Wood once compared this range from loudest to quietest to the energy received from a 50-watt bulb situated in London, ranging from close by to that received by someone in New York. To give you a better idea of the difference between this quietest sound and the loudest sound, we're going to compare it to the brightness of a lamp. And it's kind of a far-fetched comparison, but rather valid. We're going to pretend now that there is a bulb, a light bulb, a 50-watt light bulb that's turned on in London. And if you're standing right next to that light bulb, that's like the most powerful sound we can hear. And if you compare it to how much a person in New York is going to feel the brightness of that light bulb, that's like the quietest sound we can hear. Now, is anybody in New York going to notice that 50-watt bulb in England? Probably not. So they just want you to know that there is just this huge, huge difference between the loudest and the smallest sounds. There's just a huge, huge difference between the two. <clears throat> we'll do another comparison. Here's a power comparison. If we got a lot of people making noise to power a light bulb, how much would it take? It has been estimated that it would take more than three million voices all talking at once to produce power equivalent to that which can light a 100 watt lamp. So if you have a 100 watt light bulb, which they don't sell anymore because everything is now compact fluorescent bulbs or LEDs, but using an old incandescent bulb, if you wanted to light up a 100 watt lamp, you would need three million people all talking at the same time. That's how much power it would take to light up a 100 watt light bulb. Okay? Pressure and amplitude. Now we've talked about zhen fu amplitude in relation to air pressure and this gives you a little more information about it. Amplitude is the objective measurement of the degree of change, positive or negative, in atmospheric pressure, qi ya, the compression and rarefraction, compression si ya suo, rarefraction si, I think a fang song, of air molecules caused by sound waves. So far so good? So sound waves create a series of variations in air pressure. And amplitude is the way we use to measure those variations in air pressure. The amplitude of a pendulum swinging, bai zi, through an angle of 90 degrees is 45 degrees. So if a pendulum is swinging 90 degrees, 九十度, 这个的一半就是四十五度, right? That would be equivalent to the 
amplitude that we're talking about. Because an air pressure goes up and it go, uh, a sine wave goes up and it goes down, 对不对？气压会变变大，然后再放松。所以往上往下，我们就取一半。That's why it's 45 degrees. Okay, so we're going to cut things in half because we've got the pressure wave going up and down. It is half the maximum pressure change in the air as the sound wave propagates. So far, so good. 大概懂了啊。Intensity. The density of power passing through a surface perpendicular to trajectory to the direction of sound propagation is called intensity. With power, we've got energy over time. Now we're adding in something else: space. Intensity includes space. So the sound is going through a surface perpendicular to the direction it's propagating itself in. That's intensity. It's usually measured in watts. Or if we picture a sound wave as an expanding sphere of energy, 好像个地球一样，像个球形一样 Power is the total amount of kinetic, that means moving energy, contained on the sphere's surface. 这个球形的表面，它的那个 energy 多少，这个就是 intensity， 因为它已经分配在一一一整个大空间上面 Okay, so intensity. Is going to sort of spread it out and water it down because it's spreading out over space. Intensity, sound transmitted per unit time through a unit area. So far, it's clear, right? Intensity is measured in power per unit of area. So we measure one surface area, the first surface. Ah, that the sound in this surface is distributed over its intensity. So this is how we measure it: per unit of area. Usually in watts per square meter, 就是平方平方平方米 ，OK， 平方公尺。然后呢，就是 watts 会除以一个平方公尺来算。Or watts, you could also use 平方那个那个公公寸，呃，叫什么？公分也可以。Intensity is proportional to the square of the amplitude， 就是正负的平方。If you double the amplitude of a wave, that is, if the ratio of the amplitudes of two sounds is one to two, the ratio of the intensities is one to four. Tripling the amplitude results in a ratio of one to nine. So we're squaring it. 因为它会分配，它我们用一个平方来算，它分配它会变得比较淡，因为这些东西是零点几的数字，所以你用乘的，用取个平方的话。它会越来越小，因为它分配在空间上，它会慢慢的削弱。The intensity of a wave in a free field, the intensity of a wave in a free field, drops off as the inverse inverse square of the distance from the source. 所以你离这个来源越远，它分配的那个面积越广，所以它越来越削弱，越来越淡。然后我们就是用这种方式来算。So radius. Radius、uh, two times the radius, three times the radius. It、uh, the 那个 intensity 就会这样子来算 Okay, 一四分之一九分之一等 And there is our formula. The inverse square law plot. So the distance from a point source. If we start out at one, 越远那个声音就是这样子越来越小，因为它一直在分配，好像在冲淡一样 Our units of measurement. These are for reference. Sound pressure is what? The total instantaneous pressure at a point in space. In the presence of a sound wave, 就是一个声波造成的 minus the static pressure at that point. 那边会有一些阻力，对不对？哎，一些阻力是 static pressure. Sound pressure amplitude is the absolute value of instantaneous pressure. Absolute value 表示说一定要一个正的，不能有一个负的一个数字。它的单位是 Pascal. Sound power is sound energy, the ability to do work, radiated by a source per unit of time. Power 讲过了，是 energy， 然后呢把 time 也算进去了。That's sound power. Sound intensity is the average rate of sound energy transmitted in a specific direction at a point through a unit area normal to this direction at the point considered. 就是现在加上空间 
Our unit is watt per square meter or per square centimeter. The sound pressure level is the sound pressure squared reference to 20 micropascals squared measured in decibels. This will be clear. We will tell you how to calculate the Okay? Because we are talking about space, time, we're measuring intensity, and we're going to change intensity into decibels or decibels. Commonly, how loud the sound is is measured in decibels. Okay? Let's do another comparison. And this is to help us understand how our ears can handle such a huge range of different sound pressures that create sound. When we hear that teeny tiny sound, we have to really concentrate so we can hear it, right? If I go, you all have to be quiet and listen very carefully, right? But for a very, very loud sound, we're going to start plugging our ears because we can't stand it. But our ears can handle this huge range of sounds. Remember the light bulb in London and how much you can see it in New York? It's just an enormous range of sounds. We'll be clearer on that as we go along. So how can our ears handle it? Right? Things are very fragile in our body, actually. Too much bright light and your eyes can't stand it. So we're having the same thing with sound. What is it in our bodies that helps us adjust from such a teeny tiny variation in pressure to such a big one? Well, the muscles in the iris. What is the iris? Louder? Tong Kong is the pupil. What's the iris? What do you call that? Hong Wo. Yeah, that's what it is. This is the iris. They have their muscles in there. They can contract, sosua, or dilate, fang da, the pupils to adjust the amount of light coming into our eyes. And we're all aware of that. If I walk into this light, it's suddenly going to make my pupils become smaller. That's because the bright light is going to ji the muscles in the iris, and they're going to make the iris suo xiao. So my pupils become very small. That way, not too much light will go in and possibly damage the retina. So that's how eyes work. In an analogous way, the middle ear, has a mechanism which can adjust the intensity of sound waves striking our eardrums. There is something sort of similar in our middle ear that adjusts the way our ears respond to sound. If it's a tiny sound, if it's a big sound, Okay, so our eyes do it, our ears do it as well. And this mechanism can adjust the intensity of sound waves striking our eardrums. This adjustment enables us to discriminate very small changes in the intensity of quiet sounds. So when the sound is very quiet, we're very, very sensitive and we can notice even teeny, teeny, tiny differences. But it also enables our ears to be much less sensitive to volume changes in louder noises. When the noises get too loud, then so that they will not be injured and then we are less sensitive. This means that the human ear can safely hear a huge range of very soft to very loud sounds. So we've said this in many different ways, we're saying it again. That is a truly, truly amazing thing about our ears, the range of different sounds that we can handle safely. Logarithms and the decibel scale. If you hear a sound of a certain loudness, and then you are asked to choose a sound that is twice as loud as the first sound. The sound you choose will in fact be about 10 times the intensity of the first sound. So you do you see what we're saying? You think it's only twice as loud. Your ear tells you, But when we pick that sound, the difference in intensity is 
That's why we use logarithms. Everybody understand now why we pick logarithms? Yabran,我们的scale会太大,因为那个声音,我们就说到最小的声音,耳朵很敏感,我们就可以把那个整个尺度缩小,到了大的时候,它就等于是放大了,到大的时候,它就会缩小整个尺度,要不然它就会太大
空间算进去，可是你也可以直接用 amplitude 去算。那样的话呢，你要 ten times the logarithm of intensity one squared divided by intensity two squared。记得它是一个平方的一个关系，对不对？还记得是平方的关系。And then we simplify that to twenty. So twenty times the log of intensity one divided by intensity two in decibels. 这个可以简化为这个。And we're just going to do this one example here. What is the difference in decibels between 3.5 and 0.02 watts? 我们先用用瓦为单位。So what are we going to do? We're going to multiply 10 times the log of 3.5 times 0.2. So what is the quotient of 3.5 divided by 0.2? 3.5 divided by 0.02, sorry, 0.02 is how much? 3.5 divided by 200, 0.02 is how much? Sandian Wu Chui Ling Dian Ling Er Su Dosa. One seventy five, right? Mil Tua. Now what are we gonna do? We're gonna take the log of one seventy five. What's the log of one seventy five? How much? Go ahead. Two point two four is good enough. Okay? So it's the log of 175 is 2.24, and we need to multiply that by 10. What do we get? 22.4 decibels. Everybody follow that? That's how we calculate decibels, or decibels. Okay, I kind of, um, kind of vary between the two. All right, next. Power ratio of 1 to 100. If the intensity of one sound is 100 times greater than that of another, then following the formula of I1 divided by I2 equals 100, the log of 100 is 2, and 10 times 2 is 20 decibels. So if the intensity of one sound is 100 times greater than another, we get 20 decibels. An intensi intensity ratio of 1 to 100 or 0.01 yields an amplitude ratio of 0.1. 因为是平方关系，如果是 power 的话，它就是这样子。Okay. Okay. Power ratio of one to two. However, if you were to hear the noise of an air hammer, 电钻，就是会挖马路的那个，很吵吧 ？Right. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. When they're trying to rip out the asphalt, dong, 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 dong. All right, if we hear the sound of one of those, and then we added a second air hammer that was operating at the same time, if we added those two together, the increase, increase in intensity would only be three decibels. Since it would only have an intensity ratio of one to two, the intensity is ling dian wu, and an amplitude ratio of ling dian qi ling qi. And here is how we figure it. It's 40 divided by 20 is 2. The logarithm of 2 is 0 0.301. 301 times 10 equals 3 decibels. Can you believe it or do you want to? And then the square root of 0 0.5, because it has a pinfang guan xi, from intensity to amplitude, it's 0.707. Do you follow this or not? Yes or no? It's okay to say no. Um, I really okay. Did you get everything before this? Okay. So here we're going to talk about the decibel difference. When we were talking in the previous slide about a power ratio of 1 to 100, how the decibel the chabie, 就是这个声音跟这个来比的话, 用把它换算成decibel的话, 它的差别是20decibels. Remember, we're using a log logarithmic scale. Amplitude是这样子的话, 你还要取它的那个根, and then it comes out to um, 
the square root of that because that's amplitude. But if we're talking about intensity, it's 1 to 100. 1 to 100 is down. So, However, if we have one sound, and right? It has an intensity ratio only of 1 to 2. Intensity That's a tabi of 1 to 2. Amplitude的话是0.707,你可以不要管那个 amplitude. Amplitude都可以换算,它只是那个 uh, taking the um, square root, okay? Square root of, of 50, of 0 0.50. So, if we have, for example, 4 to 2, 40 to 20, that's 2, 对不对? It's 4 divided by 2. The log of 2 is 0 0.301, okay? This is a difference of only 2, 它等于是1加1等于2。so, the ratio is e to r. That all is clear? Yes or no? We Right? Okay? You can say it's just two, two, two portions of the same sound. So, we use 0.05. And, in that case, if we take the log of er of 2, it's 0.301. 再乘以十, 它的decibel, 就是3 decibels. Okay? I think that should be okay. If you don't get it, go over it later. Uh, the um, tutorials online, you can look at it yourself. A power ratio of 1 to 4, okay, a 6 decibel change in intensity means an intensity ratio of 1 to 4. That is 0.25, With an amplitude ratio of 1 to 2, or 0 0.5. Amplitude is 1 half. 然后呢, intensity is 1 fourth. So, 100 divided by 25 is 4. The log of 4, the relationship is 1 to 4. Right? The relationship is 1 to 4. Try it on your calculator. Okay? What is the log of 4? Okay, the log of 4 is how much? Right, so it's 0 0.602. And that, when you take that log, decibels. That's actually pretty easy, right? So, intensity, decibels. 那你那个log得到的是0.6左右乘以10,那就变成6 decibels. Clear? You mean? Not so clear? I'm not really clear about why is 0 0.25. 0.25? Oh, 那这是表示它的关系是1对4. This is one quarter, right? 这是四分之一, 这是一, 对四分之一的关系，所以我们用那个四分之一来算，可以吗？ We have the intensity is one one to four. 就是如果它的强度这个跟这个来比，这个是我们的 base. 然后另外一个声音是它，它的强度是它的四倍，四倍的强度。它的关系就是四对一，那就是四分之一，一对四分之一。Is that okay? Yes or no? Oh, okay. First of all, for this one, are we okay for this one? But remember, this one is for amplitude. We've got two things going here. One is intensity, one is amplitude. And the relationship between amplitude and intensity is ping fang. So if we want to switch it, to amplitude, we can use a good one amplitude, the amplitude. This is just intensity to amplitude. That okay now? We want it, we, because the relationship of this, this is this squared. 
这个的平方就是这个，所以我把这个又又还原变成 amplitude 的话，我们用根号。OK， yes， Miranda OK， or not completely？ Okay. It's OK， Annie OK？ So actually it's not that hard。我们这次看比例，马上就可以算 decibel， 并不难。用 logarithm， 用。那个呃、uh, ，square root 还不用，那是要 amplitude 才需要 square root。如果你比较的是 intensity， 你就这样直接算，就知道它的那个 decibel 有几个。OK， 是几个 decibel？ All right， from softest to loudest. Now we keep talking about the softest sound we can hear to the loudest sound we can hear. The intensity ratio between the faintest audible sound, that's the faintest audible sound, to the loudest sound we can tolerate， 能够忍受的。Okay, we can not only I mean we can just barely tolerate it. 你听太多真的会受不了，听一下下就勉强受得了，比那个还大，耳膜会震破，没办法。Okay, so this range from the very faintest sound to the very loudest sound that our ears can tolerate for a short period of time, 它那个 range 是多少？是 one to one trillion. One to one trillion. It's ten to the twelfth power, right? 10 to the 12th power. The log of 10 to the 12th is 12. 它的 logarithm 当然就是十二，对不对？它的指数。And 12 times 10 gives us the decibels. 所以从这个比例，就刚刚不是说一对二的比例就可以马上算出它的 decibel 多少？一对四也是一样。现在是一对多少？我们最大能忍受的声音，它的尺度，它的尺度是一对十二。And so, twelve times ten gives us how many decibels? 120 decibels. We can't listen to anything beyond 120 decibels and still keep our hearing. 我们最大能就是能忍受的最大声的一个声音就是一百二十分贝。那超过的话受不了了。Okay, 一定会那个耳那个听力会受到损害。可以吗 ？Are we okay with everything so far? Actually, we're just talking about the 比例。你知道强度的话，强度的比例，你马上就知道它的 decibel 是多少。其实并不是真的那么难。And this is the approximate range of intensity that human hearing can perceive and tolerate. The eardrum would perforate, perforate 是会有破洞，它会有破洞 instantly upon exposure to a 160 decibel sound. 你如果那个音这强音的强度，它的分贝数已经到一百六十的话，你的耳朵马上就会震破掉了。Okay, so what happens between one hundred and one hundred, one hundred twenty and one hundred sixty is a lot of damage. One hundred twenty 已经不行了。So 不要去不要去试，到了 one hundred sixty， 你的那个耳膜就马上就爆掉了。Okay, all right. I kind of like the pictures. I think they're cute. <laughs> How much is a trillion? Now, e dao one trillion. One trillion is one million millions. 一百万个一百万 That's one trillion. So that's one plus twelve zeros. You can count them, right? Yes. Give me a little feedback here. One and twelve zeros. Are you nodding your heads, everybody? You me? Yeah. All right. So this comes out to a very convenient number. Though seldom used because it's so large, in Chinese, which is organized in units of four zeros instead of three, in Chinese you have 四个零四个零四个零这样子来算，对不对 ？So from Chen you have one, you have the unit of one, which is what sort of shifts it from one one place over from the system we use in English. We use three from thousand, and then we go ten thousand, hundred thousand. Million, we have a new unit. But at million, you don't have a new unit. You're by one. You have a hundred, ten thousands, right? Okay, Annie. All following, right? And that's kind of hard when you're doing ko e, isn't it? When you are doing translation, when you're doing oral translation or interpretation, especially, 你要马上把是什么 ，twenty-five million 换算成英文 Can you do it right away? Very good. That's one to memorize because it's around the population of Taiwan. Those are that. That's the way I do it. Actually, Bai Wan Fu Wang is a millionaire, and Taiwan is 两千多少万现在，三百多万吗？还是现在变更大了 
，好像人口成长成长现在并不快，可能还是两千三呢。Okay, 两千三百万左右。You can use that to remember. The thing is that we keep getting shifted one place over, so it's hard to do to convert big numbers really easily from English to Chinese sometimes, or vice versa. But one with twelve zeros comes up to, comes out to a very convenient number because three is what we use, four is what we use. So if you multiply them, you get twelve. 那表示这两个 system 在这个地方会合并，对不对？又变成一个新的单位。So one plus twelve zeros is called what in Chinese? Right. Very convenient. It's zhao. And finally, here are the decibel levels of some common sounds. The threshold of excellent youthful hearing. As I mentioned, the best hearing that we enjoy in our lives is when we are babies. 刚生的那个婴儿。他的听力是最棒的，最最灵敏，最棒。So babies have the best hearing, and we continue to have quite good hearing right up until about your age, about 18. That's when our hearing starts deteriorating a bit. 从十八岁，听力慢慢的、慢慢的会变得越来越差。Isn't that terrible to see? 十八岁。十八岁。It's just the way our bodies are designed. It doesn't mean your hearing gets bad. Teenagers still have very good hearing. Early twenties, you're fine, but after age forty, maybe you'll start to notice 高频率已经不是那么清楚了 Over fifty, say forty to fifty, you've probably lost most of the frequencies above, say, fourteen thousand, twelve thousand. 大概一万二、一万四以上，你四十岁以上可能有点问题 It doesn't bother you too much because we don't really need all those. Frequencies for human speech for most sounds in our environment, but you remember that for a while it was really popular to have a cell phone ring that had a very high frequency, so all the students could hear it, but the teacher couldn't hear it. However, some people are exceptions, and even at age 40 and 50, they have very good hearing. So they say, "Turn off that cell phone." It happens, okay? But normally, by that point, you're missing those high frequencies. So if it's over 12, 14,000 hertz. You probably, if you're over 40, you're going to have trouble. So this is the threshold is 门槛 threshold is 门槛 of youthful hearing, excellent youthful hearing. 你诞生下来，你可能是刚好听力不好，那不算。Okay, 一般的健康的婴儿 zero decibels, they will hear just barely hear a sound. Normal breathing, and especially if you have good hearing, the threshold of good hearing. 一般的成人，你的听力很好。Then it's about ten decibels. 就是一般的成人，他听到的最小的声音，他可能要到 seven, ten decibels 才听得到。Okay. Soft whisper. When you have a secret you don't want to share with anybody, but everybody can tell you still hear it. That's about thirty decibels. A mosquito buzzing can be really loud, can't it? When you're trying to sleep and it's right in your ear, that's louder than whispering. And you could all hear my whispering just now. So a mosquito in your ear is forty decibels. That's a lot. Average townhouse rainfall. That's 一般的 townhouse 是一间房子接另外一间房子是连在一起的 That's a townhouse. 下雨的声音大概是五十分贝 It's about fifty decibels. Ordinary conversation, not like I'm speaking now. I'm speaking kind of loud, but just you and your friends talking to each other. That's about sixty decibels. A busy street is about seventy, but I would give it more for Taipei. I don't know. Actually, the streets are much, much better than they used to be. You know, when you're trying to make a cell phone call and you're close to the street, what do you usually do? Can you hear if you're right next to the street? Usually, I go into a store. 我会进到店里面去，因为如果太太靠近那个马路的话 ，cell phone 真的很不容易打，就听得清楚。Ordinary conversation, 60. A busy street, 70. Depends on how bad the traffic is. In Taipei, it honestly is much better than it was in the 70s. In the 70s, there was more traffic. It was louder. It was smellier, more polluted. So actually, it's much better than it was. But it's still very hard to make a cell phone call close to the road. A power mower, a car horn, or a fortissimo orchestra. 交响乐团乐团，它是它的那个声音大小是 double F 是 fortissimo 是很强。或者按喇叭，或者是割草机 ，which we know when we're trying to have class, always it is often raining at the same time, and they want to cut the grass, and we're trying to listen to these funny sounds and phonetics, right?、We've, we're、um, competing with a power mower that's 100 decibels 左右 
an air hammer that we've just been talking about. If you're at just about one meter, one meter is say about this long, if you're one meter away from a, an air hammer, it's going to be 120 decibels. And what do we know about 120 decibels? How, what do our ears, how do our ears feel about 120 decibels? Vivian? It's the loudest sound we're going to put up with. We're going to leave. Our ears will say, no, this is no good. So that's our outer limit of loudness is 120 decibels. Just stay away from anything louder than that. 120 itself is not good. Do you feel really comfortable when you've got an air hammer working away right next to you? It's pretty awful, right? So that's already the jixian of our hearing. We don't want any, anything worse than that. We can hear more, but it's going to cause damage. A rock concert is worse, 130. And remember when I told you last time about that Sigur Ross concert I went to? I was outside the door. I just happened to be in the hallway that day in the Tiyuguan. And it was very boomingly loud. My whole body was vibrating. So rock singers normally have to wear earplugs or they will have damage quite quickly. That's 130 uh, decibels. A jet engine at 30 meters. Don't try it. 150. And a rocket engine at 30 meters, getting ready for takeoff, that would be 180. Your hearing would be gone. You need to go to the hospital. Okay, so if you want more of these, they're online. Here's the range of human hearing, and this one is really interesting. This is where conversation takes place. And you can see it's about how many decibels to how many decibels at about 100 hertz. About how many? This is 40, this is 60, this is 80, so about 45, going up to about a bit over 70, right? So at 100 hertz, this is 100 hertz here, this is about the range that we use for human speech. And at higher frequencies, we can go higher. Human speech does go that high for which sounds? Right, for fricatives, very good. So fricatives are going to go up that high. And this is the normal range of human speech. We can have singing here in the middle. There's a thousand hertz and higher for a soprano. They'll be going up pretty high. That's all right, human conversation. What other things do we have here? Now, this is the line that measures what we can hear. This is the hearing threshold. That means if a sound is really, really low, we're getting close to 10 here. We can't really hear 10 hertz as a sound. It's more like beats. It has to be pretty loud. If it's about, say, 15, about 18 is our threshold of hearing. But the volume has to be pretty loud because our hearing is not so sensitive for very, very low sounds. Maybe about 95, so maybe 90 or more decibels before we can hear a sound that low. And you can do this online. There's a very interesting program. I'll have to, I think I posted it. Okay, so as the frequency goes up, the sound gets higher. Our sensitivity also becomes better. Just as singing, until we get to a certain point here where it turns around. So you can see this is a logarithmic scale. We start at, okay, from 10 to here is 100, but the same distance from 100 to here is 1,000. And then the same distance again from 1,000 to here is 10,000. So our hearing sort of starts getting less sensitive again at about what point? This is 2, 3, 4. 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you can see this is divided up into thousands. So at about, this is 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, what's this? About 4,000 what? What's our, what's our unit? Hertz, right? This is 四千克左右。我们的敏感度又开始回转了,又开始比较不敏感了。so starting from 4,000 hertz, going up 5,000, 6,000, our sensitivity is getting a little worse. Up until about, here we have 10,000, and this is 11,000. Alright? So, this is, this is from inaudible, we can't hear. This is the barely audible sound, just a mian It's getting better and better and better up to here, up to about 4,000 hertz, and then it starts falling off again. And then for older people, we're just going to be missing a lot of these frequencies. Conversation, here's the lawnmower that we were talking about. It's at 100, or um, about 100 decibels. And rock concerts is in this area, and they label it as what? High risk. That means you're hurting your ears. And by this point, you're feeling terrible pain. And a gunshot is about that loud. I have not been that close to a gun right at my ear, but you can imagine it from movies and television. Okay, this is all clear? And annotated equal loudness curves. Each band here means that we hear this, any particular sound along the way here, we hear is as about being equally loud. So it can be very quiet in terms of decibels. Tadanega decibel, tad intensity, this is clear? Hey ma. So that is why we hear frequency. We are more sensitive to frequencies. Well, yes, up to the point when our hearing is still good. You can just see where it falls on this um, because we're good with high sounds, yeah. Ah, amplitudes? Do you have this kind of illusion? Ask again. Mm, I mean, because they are in very high frequencies, so when we hear it, we might think that it is loud, it's very loud. Ah, well, one thing is they are pretty loud. You know, we've got a lot of noise. They are pretty loud, and also the noise is scattered, so it doesn't sound harmonious. So ah is also pretty loud, but shh, because it's so scattered, so that's another reason why we feel it's loud. There is a, um, there's a chart in the book that compares the relative loudness of different sounds. We talked about it already, actually. Um, in this chapter, it's also in another chapter, we'll see it. So different sounds have different loudness levels, different uh, decibel levels, but it also depends, remember, on what? But it's not just the sound itself. When we're hearing it in speech, what else will affect it? Let's go shopping. That's a bush. Where it falls in the sentence, whether it has stress or not, um, a lot of things. Those will all affect the level of, of um, sound, the loudness level. Okay? So, there, there are many different reasons involved. But one thing is, that's one reason it sounds loud. 
what do you do? Well, you don't listen to the radio, but when you're listen, listening to something, you're listening to a sound you like, uh, sorry, a song you like, what do you often do? And then suddenly there's a song you don't like. Do you do? You may have a don't do. You turn the volume down, right? Is that right? Why think that that song you like is not the big voice, it's the small voice, it's the small voice. Right? Do you do that or not? Sometimes? Okay, I'm really conscious of it. If it's a song I like, I turn up the volume. I really want to hear it. If it's a song I suddenly don't like, or if it's a commercial, I turn it way down. So, 不约而也是一个原因 All right, scattered frequencies. But everybody's clear what this is trying to say. It just means that a sound could be, in fact, it could have a very high loudness level, but we don't hear it as loud because our ears are not sensitive. But where our ears are sensitive, it can be very, very soft, and we hear it as equally loud. That's all it's saying. So, annotated equal loudness curves. The curves represent equal loudness as perceived by the average human ear. Equal loudness in fonts. It's the单位叫 font, P H O N. This is they take out of it, take out of it. A font is a very large font, which is font. We in the subjective think it's the same size. We can use font to count. So. All of these are 10 fonts. All of these are 12 fonts. Even though they have very different intensities, our ear thinks they sound about equally loud. That's all clear. Hey, Ma, Bella, okay? Yeah, Sylvia, okay? Hmm. Sound intensity in decibels does not directly reflect the changes in the ear's sensitivity with frequency and with sound level. 就是我们的耳朵有它自己的过滤的一个功能，所以它对不同。大小的声音，不同的在不同的频率有不同的反应。The ear is less sensitive to low frequencies, and this discrimination against lows becomes steeper for softer sounds. Curve for the average thre threshold of hearing. 一般人，他勉强勉强可以听得到，大概是这样画的。这个以下听不见，就是这个虚线以下一般人听不见。Okay, that's our threshold of hearing. The maximum sensitivity region for human being、uh, for human hearing is around three to four kilohertz. That means、uh, kilohertz is thousand hertz and is associated with the resonance of the auditory canal. That means we have the most sensitive region, about three thousand to four thousand hertz. That's something useful to know. That's worth putting in your notes. Our hearing is most sensitive at about 3,000 to 4,000 hertz. 为什么会这样子呢？因为耳道的关系，耳道本身有个共鸣，它的共鸣大概是三千二、三千五左右，三千到四千之间，是我们的耳道的共鸣。Remember what happens if we make a sound that corresponds to the resonance, the natural resonance of a container? 我们是不是一个共鸣箱？我们发出它喜欢的声音，它就会开始震动的很厉害，对不对？ Yeah, not enough sleep. <laughs> okay,、um, that's what happens with our auditory canal. 耳道就是这样，它是一个共鸣箱，它的范围大概是三千到四千赫左右，所以这个范围内我们声音最敏感、最棒，听力最好。Okay, SPL and SL. There are two common methods of establishing a reference level. R R 叫做 reference level， 就是我们的参考值。In decibel measurements, one uses 20 micropascals of a 1,000 hertz tone. 记得我们能听到最小最小的声音是 20 micropascals. It's two 100 thousandths of a pascal. 还记得吗？前面就是能听到的最小最小的声音的值。我们如果发出的声音，我们先定它的频率是一千赫。So our sound is a thousand hertz, and we are Playing it just at the threshold of human hearing. We play 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 at the threshold of human hearing. 就是你的参考值是什么？它算的方式不一样。第一个是一千赫的声音，然后发出的声音是耳朵最勉强能听到的最小的声音
，就是大概是 twenty micropascals， 那个量法叫 SPL sound pressure level。另外一个方法 uses the absolute threshold frequency for a tone at each individual frequency， 那就是我们前面看过的那个表上面，它发出的声音看似几赫，每一个声音如果是一百赫。他就用这个值，啊，如果是一千赫，他用这个值。他看我们听到声音，每一个声音最，呃，的门门槛，对不对？能听到最小的声音，而还听得见它的门槛。每一个频率它有不同的一个基底，这样子。That's called S L sensation level. OK， 第二种算法。是 sensation level。第二种，你你觉得哪一个会比较准？就我们的人的耳朵来说，哪一个比较符合我们人能听到的那个整个范围 ？The first or the second? The second, right? 第二个是它的整个设计是用我们自己的敏感度。的不同的这个所有的变化，做它作为它的基础来计算的。第一个就是全部标准化，我们用一千赫，也不管你的敏感度，就是用一千赫来算。So the first one 是比较标准化，而第二个是按照我们自己的听力的敏感度来设计的。So SPL and SL, I'm not going to test you on that. Okay. Now let's look at the change in power measured in watts. Change in decibels, and then the change in apparent loudness. If there is an increase, 它声音声音变大的那个呃幅度啊，用瓦用 power 来算的话，你乘以一点三的话 ，that's about one decibel difference. It's the smallest audible change in sound level. A、uh, level. It's noticeable only if two sounds are played in succession. So if there's a difference of one decibel between two sounds, 你听得见，勉强听得见，这个声音比那个稍微大声一点点。But only in what situation? Under what circumstances? If, if you, any? Okay, it's it's over here on the right. 隔的那个上面，右边上面。The only time we can tell the difference between those, these two sounds is if we do what? Play them one after the other. Do, 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 do. If we play them one after the other, we can hear a difference. But if we just play them out of the blue, we can't tell, you know, what the level is. So that's one decibel. If you play two sounds in succession, 你听得出这个声音比那个声音大声一点点 That's one decibel. Okay. If we double the power, remember we talked about 一对二的关系是差不多三分贝的关系，还记得吗 ？We spent a lot of time on that. I see these nods. Some of you got it anyway. That's about three decibels. We've doubled the power. Remember the air hammer and another air hammer. 这是一对二的关系。我们得到的是 three decibels. It's just perceptible. 啊，我们就还听得到这两个不一样，大大声。If the power Is increased, multiplying it by 3.2. That's about five a five decibel difference. Clearly noticeable. 很明显听得出这两个是不一样大小的声音 If we increase the power four times, then that is about a six decibel difference. Power 乘以四四对一的关系我们已经算过了还记得吗 That's about a six decibel difference. It's a bit less than twice as loud. 还不到两倍大声的感觉的感受 If it's ten times as loud, the second sound is ten times as loud as the first one. That is a ten decibel change, and it's a bit more than twice as loud. 比两倍大声的感受还要再多一些 And if we multiply it by a hundred, if it's a hundred times the power of the first sound, that's about 20 decibels. Remember, 一对一百，我们算出来的是分贝。It's much louder, which is not a very precise description, but it will have to do. Amplitude of overtones. We talked about the human voice having 
overtones every time we talk. So ah, we've got an F0, and then we've got 乘以一, 乘以二, 乘以三, 一路上去, 对不对? All right, those are the overtones. The harmonics or overtones are also called partials of a sound. They decrease by 12 decibels for each doubling of frequency. So going from 100 to 200 hertz, 我们降下了十二分贝. Going from 200 to 400, 又降下了十二分贝. Remember we said that the overtones are not as loud as the fundamental frequency and that's why it's hard to hear them as separate sounds. 因为它的那个音量会一直降下来,它声音比较小, remember? Yeah? So, every time we double the frequency, that means every time we get an octave, 那是八度音,每一次是频率的八度音,就是乘以二,乘以四,等等,乘以八,每一次是 or each is equivalent of a musical octave. Those are Badu in. Okay? So the overtones will go down 12 decibels for each doubling of frequency. However, in human speech, it's because woman a piston. What's a piston? Louder? What's a piston? It's pushing the air out. For that reason, it's increasing the pressure back. These partials or overtones, So we got some air pressure back. That will strengthen the amplitude of the speech signal. This is called the radiation factor. 就是嘴唇像活塞的这个功能,这个叫做radiation factor. Or radiation impedance, 不需要背. So, for every octave, 每个八度音,本来是已经减弱了十二分贝, 它又加回六分贝, 加了六分贝回去. So the net decrease in amplitude of the overtones of a speech sound is how much per octave? Six decibels. So each octave going successively for, for each octave um, of each of, of, of the overtones, each increase of uh, each doubling of the frequency of the overtones, it's going to reduce it 12 decibels, but the lips add back in six decibels, so we end up still with six decibels per octave, going down only by six per octave. Okay? Yes. It seems to apply for everything. According to what I've read, it's, it applies to everything because the lips are still pushing out the sound. Even if it's ah, uh, but our lips just ah. Uh, that's true. That's true. Um, I haven't looked into the details of that. That's an interesting question. For B, you get more of a feeling the lips are pushing it out. But I think this is just something added back in the Nissing Banaijosa Downsa. So that's a good question. I'd have to look into it further. Okay? Frequency and decibels, ranges and limits. Here is a link to a tone rising in frequency to cover much of the range of human hearing. And we'll have to see how this works. You may have to cover your ears, so be ready if all works well. <laughs> Not at the beginning. Okay, there we go. That was the it was rising in frequency to cover much the range of human hearing. Here is a link to a tone going down progressively, first in six steps of six decibels each, then again in 12 steps of three decibels each. So you're going to hear a sound going from loud to soft. It's going to go down in only six units the first time, and each unit will be going down by six decibels, because we were just talking about decreases of 6 decibels and 12 decibels in the overtones, right? 
So this will give you a more concrete idea of what that means in terms of actual sound. Okay, so the first one is six decibels, and it'll be, there'll be six steps, and the second one is going, by, going down, I'm sorry, the second one is not by 12 decibels, it's by three decibels each. So the second time it's 12 steps, but we've divided the six decibels in half to three decibels. So there'll be 12 steps each time it goes down by three decibels. So you can hear it's slowly getting softer. Okay? Did you count them? The first one is six, second one is 12. Just listen one more time. The first time it's going down by six decibels at a time. And the second one it's going down by three decibels at a time in 12 beats. Okay? That was three decibels at a time at the end. And here are some links to explore. If you're interested in this stuff, there's all kinds of things online, and you can get more information here. <laughs> Do you agree? <laughs> Took a while for you to react. <laughs> okay, enough on decibels for now. That's it. Okay, any questions? Then you're going to have to measure the different levels of the sounds. It's because the sound is the same, so it's just one plus another one. We can do that. For the other ones, you're going to have to measure the different. But it's also only one sound. Added on to another. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good question. Anything else? All right. <laughs> all right. I didn't expect you to get all of it, but maybe pieces of it were clear. And the overall idea is clear. What I hope is that you got the overall idea of how it works. The details are actually not that hard. If you go through it with a calculator, you think about it, you'll get it. It's not a big deal. This is the hardest thing that we do in the two semesters of phonetics. But actually, it is not that hard if you sit down with it. If you were a science or engineering student or math student, it would be no big deal at all. It's just that we do less math where we are now. But it is not that hard of a thing. If you don't get the details, it's fine too. It's just important to understand sort of how it works. The main thing for decibels is they work on a logarithmic scale. That you need to remember. So if something increases by 10 decibels, it's 100 times as loud. So you have to watch out for that. As you see the decibel, decibel level going up, you know that our whole range is 1 to 120. So if you, see, if you see a difference of 10 decibels, that's a huge jump. And we are more sensitive down here, less sensitive up here. And that's, that's how we can handle so many different sounds. If they're very loud, very soft, our ears will adjust. Any questions, Sylvia, any? No? Everybody give some feedback, good. Oh, because if we are just counting amplitude, we are only taking into account energy and time. All we're counting is energy and time. But with intensity, it's energy, time, and area. And when we spread it out over an area, it's going to be be chong dan. So amplitude and intensity the guan xi is the ping fang the guan xi. Yao amplitude bian sheng intensity ni jiu zhuan ta de ping fang. Cause ni yao chong intensity dao amplitude na yo. Yo, Zayang. Take the square root. You take the square root. Okay? Did that explain it? It's because we were switching from amplitude to intensity and intensity to amplitude. That one that you were asking, we were going from intensity to amplitude, so we had to take a square root to get back here. We start with this, its square is this. So if we want to go from this back to this, we have to take its square root and go back. Uh, 
amplitude 是一对二的关系，它的强度是一对四。And we're always using numbers 是零点多少，所以你用乘的的话，它的数字会变小。So we take the amplitude and then we square it and we get this. Square 通常数字会变大，可是零点多少它会变小，所以它是从这个变这个，它数字会变小，因为分配在比较广的一个区域。That explain it? That's very confusing. I had to work on that too at the beginning when I was sorting this out. But that makes it clear, doesn't it? So intensity is spreading out the sound. So it's being spread out. The distance is getting longer. We're not hearing it. Okay? So we're using 0.2. Then when we calculate its intensity, it's smaller. Okay? Anything else? That was a very good question. Anybody just give one sentence feedback? You can say, I'm really confused, or I'm very sleepy is okay. But everybody give one sentence of feedback. Sylvie? Okay, okay. So you just learned the different names for the thing. So it wasn't that new for you. Okay, but did you learn about decibels? You did? In what school? Really? They taught decibels. That's good because most of my students tell me they haven't learned about amplitude or decibels or, or frequency. They just haven't learned that much about it. Students tell me. So I guess you were lucky. Okay. Um, I just wonder Um, probably when you're, for example, if you're going to have a concert and then you have to set up the auditorium and the speakers, you really need to know this stuff. Okay. I just want to um, maybe, maybe have an example for this. I don't know, because I was trying to identify like, two sounds in that, um, in that, the, the graph. Oh, yeah. Just, mm -hmm. just heard it. Uh -huh. And um, it's hard for me to tell which sound is twice as loud as another. Yes, that's true. It goes by very fast. But they have very controlled experiments when they want to figure out what a fawn is. They will play this sound and then another sound. And then you say, you know, what is the difference between the two? And then they'll find when just about everybody agrees, this one seems to be about twice as loud. It's only two sounds in succession. If it's a bunch, <laughs> but if you know you have a very controlled experimental situation, you hear two sounds, you can probably identify. Now that one sounds about twice as loud as this one. If they have to, after they play lots of pairs of sounds for you, most people agree. I think it's very interesting too, and that's why they are able to make a graph like that with that kind of a unit. If they didn't find a whole bunch of people who agreed, they wouldn't have been able to do it. We can do that with frequency as well, for pitch, and also for loudness. So they, they've done, they tested huge numbers of people, and they've found the zhi, and they found people mainly agree, even though it seems very subjective, right? If you get two sounds in a row, you know, different pairs of sounds in a row, it's not that bad. Yeah, that's a good question. to calculate the decibels, but not, uh, the teacher didn't explain so much about it. You mean, oh, in school before? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then it was pretty clear to you. Not so difficult. Uh, a, little, a little difficult. But not so bad. Mm -hmm. Okay, so both of you, you and Sylvie, both had some background before. I'm sure that made it much easier. Okay, Amy? This is online, so just go to page 12. It's page 12 in phonetics 2. You can go over it. In the safety and calm and peace of your own little space, I find it hard to do these things in a group. I have to go home and then think about them myself, think them through. This one took a lot of thinking through for me. I love science. I'm OK with math, but it's not what I usually do, so I had to work hard to come up with this. And it was mainly because of those two paragraphs that we read in class last time. When we were going to start the tutorial, we just finished the one page instead. Those two paragraphs, I got so many questions from students. What is this? What is that? What does he mean? That's why I did it. And then it took me a long time. I did lots of research, mostly on the internet. I had different people look at it. Professor Latifoged looked at it. My son's physics teacher looked at it. Um, a, former, a former student of mine who was in the physics department also gave me some suggestions. There may still be mistakes in it. So, 
if any of our viewers of this video notice anything that they think needs fixing, please email us and then we will fix it. So I've, I've improved it, I've fixed some things over the years, but overall, I think it's reasonable. At least it explains things more than those two paragraphs did. Okay, any other reaction other than it looks kind of confusing, Amy? I also don't really understand what Amy was asking the part mm -hmm. about the... About the square and the square root? Um, the amplitude ratio that <laughs> Okay. Just, just to summarize once more really quickly, we've got two, two ways of measuring sound pressure differences that we are now, that we perceive as sound. One of them is just take energy plus time, that's all. That's amplitude. Just air pressure, the energy involved plus time, just those two things. But if we add in spreading out over an area of space, then it's intensity. And when we go from amplitude to intensity, we square it. That's one had a ping fang. And because all of these numbers are less than one, has the yi xia. So yi ni zai ping fang de shi hao bian xiao. So starting from amplitude, we have only work or energy plus time. If we add in space, it's going to get spread out. The sound is going to go down. That's intensity then we square it to get to intensity from this measure. It's just, that's the main thing. And that is actually kind of tough to understand. You need to think about it a while, but if we're only looking at work plus time, not that sort of help? You might want to spend some time on it after class. Okay, go ahead. I needed a lot of time with it. So sometime is eating Yeah, I needed a lot of time with this. I only four times to do it. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's okay. The whole thing? Yeah. Was there anything you did get out of it? Um, um, at first, I'm still wondering about the relationship between air pressure and decibels. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, so it, everybody's asking pretty much the same question. You're just going to have to think about it for a while. It's just energy and time, and then if we add in space, it's going to turn into intensity. When we get Actually, we can use just the plain amplitude. That's because we're spreading it out over space. The number needs to get smaller because it's getting quieter. 看多长的距离,它的声音就会相对的变得比较小。That's what intensity does. Okay? Anything else? Anything that you got out of it that you sort of remember that was useful? For example, the sensitivity of the human ear at different frequencies? Yeah. That I remember. Okay, anything else you remember that was useful or clear? Mm -hmm. Okay, how about you, me? I think the last thing about the How they become smaller. Okay, now we have a formula. Now we have a formula. Yeah. Okay, so good. Something made sense. Good. Okay, Miranda? I guess I have to review one after class. That's fine. Can you pick out something that you remember that impressed you? Uh, I think the facts, facts, um, the easy facts that the power limits to loudest sounds.
Okay, that's good enough. Okay, Wendy, you missed part of it. Yeah, I'm going to go back and review and study around. But uh, I'm impressed by the, the uh, each this is the twelve decimal. The overtones. Okay. You I knew I knew it before, but I don't I don't I didn't know why. Okay, maybe you can do it with your boyfriend or you can talk to him after you've reviewed it. <laughs> okay, so I can teach a lot for now I'll get like too much emotion. Okay, so look at it yourself first. Yeah. Okay, and Tina. Um, I think I, I really need more time to think about it. Yeah. Okay. Can you pick out something that you remember that impressed you? Um, maybe the sensitivity of our ear. Right. There's a difference of one trillion, right? Okay, um, that was that. I warned you about it, but it's not really that bad. I mean, I, I think the big problem was mainly about this idea of power and intensity, it's not all. It's not a big deal. So it's you know, not that important. It's just a few more details so you know more about how loudness works. But overall, I think it just helps you understand something that was not you know, really covered very thoroughly in the book. That's it, we better, we need a break. Can we just go straight through? There's only 10 minutes of class left. Can you make it? If you really have to go to the bathroom, you can run. All right, Okay, um, let's turn this off actually. Um, we're probably not going to have time to go through all the exercises. 10 minutes is not really enough unless you think it is. Because that was next on our agenda for today was going through the exercises. Let me just ask you first, did anybody decipher the spectrogram? Oh, sigh. Sigh. Did anybody get it? Did you get any words? He said? Nope. No. Nope. But that was not, not too bad, actually, because of the s is right. We got the s right. Yeah. Anybody else? I bet you can get the first word. I have my. Yes, the first word is my. All right? Because we know that I pretty well by now, don't we? We've covered it a few times in other spectrograms. And lai, ngai, nai do not make good first English words of a sentence. So my. Just doing, using phonotactics, if you had the I, it was probably not so bad. And then there's another I. Where is that? Right. It's the fourth segment is I as well. So you've got two I's and you've got the first word my. Anything else that we recognize? We've got this, that's the third to the last. And do we have another s? Where is it? Um, okay, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's the seventh segment, right? Mm -hmm. It looks like a s, but compare it to the s on the right. Do they look the same? Which one is weaker, first or the second? Very often when we see a weaker fricative, what might the reason be? It was supposed to be voiced, but it was devoiced. So that tells you that this sound is probably z. We've got another sound. And we've got the f two segments before that that they gave you already. And we've got i, so we've got i. My something if. My life. My life. There's a vowel before that z, so you don't have to put it right there. There's a vowel before the z, so you don't have to worry about the z. What is the word? You had the right idea. Most of you had it. Forget about the z. Huh? My wife. My wife. Is. We got it. 
My wife is. You did it. Well done, Yumi. My wife is. What else? What's after z? It looks like an uh, doesn't it? Equal distribution. My wife is uh. So he's going to say something about his wife. <laughs> no, it's not sh. After uh. Do we see a burst there? It's an aspirated, aspirated voiceless stop, right? So it's either what or what or what? P T or K. It's either P T or K. No velar pinch. Well done. Good. No velar pinch. It's not a k. That leaves t and p. Which one is the louder of the two? Right. Does this one look kind of loud? It does look pretty loud, doesn't it? Okay, yeah, it could have been the printout. And then what do we have? Look at the beginning of the next segment. That's obviously a vowel because it's so dark, right? What's the beginning of the segment? Look at the fun page just for like a teeny tiny sliver. It looks like what? E or a, doesn't it? It looks like e or a because it's fairly evenly distributed. Not quite like a, so it's actually not a. It's either a or a, right? And then what do we have? We have it sort of getting mushy and lighter, so what is that probably? Archie, we've got really, we've got a drop off of F2 and F3. We'll worry about that one later. Let's, they, already give you, oh, they already give you the L and the N anyway. Right? And then we've got, what do we see right after that N? We've got another voiceless stop. You can see another spike there. It's a bit faster than the other one. The first one was longer. But what does this one look like? It could be. And it's voiceless, right? Well, no. Actually, I see a little bit of a voice bar there. There's a little bit of a voice bar there. So, PDK, BDG, what's the next part? The next part is a vowel. What does that look like? Does it look pretty evenly distributed? So, it could be a, might be an uh, might be a schwa here, right? And then after that, what do we have? We've got a big blank, except there's some voicing. So a blank with some voicing might be a voice stop, right? Probably a voice stop. And what kind of a voice stop do you find after an uh sound in English at the end of a word? We often find ud, right? Ud. Uh, syllable um, patterns like, like chai. So it is some kind of a voiced stop at the end of a word after a schwa. There's a good chance it's ud. And then we've got another big blank, but we've got another big bunch of aspiration. So what's that? What do we have after the d? If we see almost nothing there, what is it usually? It's usually what kind of a stop? Do you see any voicing? No voicing at all. So what do we have? Voiceless stop, probably. Now, does it look like the t? We've already looked at two t's. Does it look like them? No, it doesn't. So it's probably not t. And anything else? Is it really loud? Not quite as loud, doesn't look really extremely loud. And it's kind of lower. And it's kind of lower. So it doesn't look like t. And it's lower and sort of quieter. Well, let's keep going. How about the vowel again?
Does it look like E? Does it look like E? F2 isn't high enough for E. F2 would have to be really high, and F1 would be lower, probably. And we've got the S after the vowel, but there's something kind of going on between the vowel and the S. And then we've got another vowel before the very last segment, and what does that look like? That looks like a schwa, doesn't it? And what comes after the schwa? What does that kind of sketchy line pattern look like? Looks like a nasal. So what do we probably have at the end? Um, un, or ung. But does it look like ung? Doesn't look velar because, as Sylvie has pointed out for the other one, I don't see any velar pinch there. So it's probably either um or un, right? You've got a lot of clues now. OK, see if you can get it by next class, by Wednesday. Anybody cracked it? OK, that's, that's a lot of clues. We're going to leave that one right there. Try to get it by Wednesday. Don't knock yourself out. You know, don't get too upset with yourself if you don't get it, but try. And the next one is show me a spotted hyena. We need to segment that. Mm. Since we have just a few minutes, let's see if we can get through some of this. Um, it says to, it said to make a spectrogram of a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. What measurements did you get for F1, two, and three of these four words? Do you have them written down? Okay, Vivian, how about for bird? What did you get? Actually, I did I find, find it correct. Um, she didn't find the you don't have to. Just read it yourself. That's what I did. You know, that's a good way of thinking. But in fact, since it was hard to get, I didn't want to find it either. It was too much trouble. So I just recorded it. So why don't you, for next time, record this yourself with plot. And then all you have to do is put your cursor on the point you want to measure. We'll tell you how many hertz it is. So use plot. Make it display a spectrogram. And then just put your cursor on each point, on each format that you want to measure, and you can get the answer. They can do it. That's one way to do it. It's not completely reliable. You can try that too. That's fine. Do it visually. Just put the cursor where you want it on the point, and then it will give you a number. Okay? The formats it gives you is in red dots, and they're not always correct. But they're useful as a reference. If you want to do that too, that's fine. But just try it visually and put the cursor on each format and you'll get the value. It will show the value on the left. Okay, do that for Wednesday. Um, for each of the four words, F1, 2, and 3. And it says, does this way of measuring vowel similarity correspond with your auditory judgment of their similarity? That's what they're saying. And then E should have been pretty easy. You just have to put the numbers in. Did anybody have trouble with E? Any trouble with E? It's a very straightforward formula. He gives you all the numbers. You just get your calculator and figure it out. And the same for F. You need two sets of values for F because one is using air as a, medi a medium, and the other one is helium in Chinese is Hi, right, and that makes you sound like Donald Duck. When you have helium, when you're breathing helium, you sound like Donald Duck. Have we, we haven't talked about that? Okay, let's see if we can get one really fast. Helium is poisonous. I don't recommend trying this. <clears throat> but I did try it before myself, and I listened to other people trying it. Let's go to YouTube. Hang on. Okay, here's some kids playing. I've seen this one before. They are inhaling helium from a balloon. <laughs> inhaling. That's how you sound when you inhale helium. Have you tried it before, Vivian? That's right, that's enough. Just hang on. Okay, so you can hear those really high pitched voices. If you inhale helium, like from a balloon, the high chi, xi jin chi de shi what is the reason for it? Why does it sound like you're talking like Donald Duck? 
Why does that happen? This question gives you sort of a cue or a clue. Right, so the speed of sound in ordinary air is about 35,000, but in helium, sound moves, moves much, much faster. And so if you have a very fast movement, you're going to get a high pitch, high frequencies. So for this one, make sure that you calculate um, the resonances of the vocal tract for both regular air and for helium. Okay, it will go much faster in helium. That's why it's 92,700 centimeters per second instead of 35,000 centimeters per second, okay? And then, all right, G we've already done, right? We've already done that one in class. And then C, um, right, and then see what you can say about this spectrogram. So G and H we've already done in class. What was the answer to those? What was that spectrogram? I dislike some linguists, right, okay. And then for I, this one also just takes a little bit of thought. I is not hard. If you just think about V and P, those points, the perturbation theory, um, and it refers you to, to figure 8.2. Okay, so the velocity and pressure points, just think about that because there's a, there's a puzzle here. Something happens to the um, U vowel in California in English, but this theory doesn't seem to explain it very well. The perturbation theory doesn't explain it very well. So those are all the exercises. Do you have any quick questions before we go? Because we need to mark these in class on Wednesday. Try to figure out the rest of the spectrogram. It should be easier now. Amy? G in our book, mm -hmm. um, on, on the CD, it's actually part of A. G is part of A. Yes, uh, of, of the problem of, of A. Oh, it's supposed to be part of A. Yeah. Ah, okay, thank you. I also want to know which spectrogram I was talking about. I think that they were talking about the other one. But never, I thought they were talking about it, but it doesn't matter because we're doing both. We've already done, I just like some linguists, and then we will do this one in part A. So basically, don't worry about G and H, okay? Whichever one they're referring to, we're, we're already covered. We have covered it or we will cover it, okay? Any other questions about the um, exercises? How went he, Let's go. Amy, anything else? We're done. Okay, we'll see you on Wednesday. Don't forget vowels and consonants.